Hello, this is D, and I'm back with another video. Well, this was a very interesting week for news regarding the Xbox Series X as Microsoft released information on the Velocity architecture. Now, yesterday, Jason Ronald, who is the program director of management over at the Xbox Series X, sat down with Major Nielsen to talk in detail about the Velocity architecture. Now, this is a very detailed explanation of what's going on with the Velocity architecture and the tremendous increase to the IO throughput that this delivers on the Xbox Series X. Now without further ado, I'm going to let the video play and at the end I'll come back and give you guys my thoughts. As promised, joining us today is Jason Ronald, who's a good friend of the show and uh, an expert when it comes to Xbox Series X. Jason, good to see you. Good to see you, Larry. Excited to be back on. Yeah, I mean, I, I asked you last time we had you on, where we were talking about a bunch of the Xbox Series X features, some of the technical side. Let's have you back on. We've had a couple of um, new features or kind of went into a little bit more detail about the last two features. And I wonder if we could uh, kind of walk through this again. The first one is Xbox Series X Optimize with a capital O. What, can you explain to us what that means, Jason? It's a great question, Larry. When we think about optimize for Xbox Series X, what we're really focused on is highlighting titles that are taking full advantage of the next-gen performance and capabilities of the Xbox Series X. And when we think about it, there's really kind of three classes of titles that are optimized for Xbox Series X. First are titles that are built natively to take full advantage of the Xbox Series X. Titles like Halo Infinite, as an example. Uh, you know, from day one, it'll take full advantage of the full capabilities of Xbox Series X. Then we have some titles that are exclusive to next gen. These are titles that could not be done on any other generation of consoles. Games like The Medium or Scorn uh, that are fully optimized for Xbox Series X. And then there's titles that have been previously released that the developers actually going back and they're actually enhancing or upgrading the title like Gears 5 to really take advantage of the next gen capabilities to make sure that you're playing the best version of the game you've ever seen before. And there's a lot of elements of what optimize means. You kind of talked about the categories, but you know they could optimize the frame rate or, or load times, right? There's a bunch of different things that they can they can they can tweak, right? Exactly. We give a lot of flexibility uh, and creative control to the developers on how they want to take advantage of the Xbox Series X. So that can be everything from dramatic improvements in load times or maybe a developer will go out and actually really lean into ray tracing to push their visuals higher than you've ever seen them before. Other titles will optimize for things like ultra high frame rates because it's more of a competitive based game or it's critical to the gameplay experience. So we're just really excited to see what developers are starting to do with Xbox Series X. And I think you'll see a set of opportunities and enhancements across the portfolio. So that's the optimized side of it. Now, the next part of it is you had a blog post on it earlier this week. It's the Xbox Velocity Architecture, and that's kind of an umbrella for a lot of different uh, kind of some elements. And I want to want to want to start by having you walk us through what you see as the Xbox Velocity Architecture. It's a great question, Larry. So the Xbox Velocity Architecture really comprises four different components to come together to really be this next generation innovation unlike anything you've seen in a previous console. So at the base of the Xbox Velocity ar architecture is our custom NVMe SSD. And this really opens up a lot of opportunities because it delivers more than 40 times the storage throughput of the Xbox One. And it just really opens up a lot of new opportunities for us. Then we have the hardware decompression blocks, which are really focused on offloading compression from the CPU to these dedicated blocks so that developers can make their games smaller. So you have smaller footprint on the actual uh, hard drive or you have smaller downloads and you don't have to uh, use CPU resources to go do that. Next, you have direct storage, which is a brand new API that's been designed for this next generation storage. And it puts a lot more fine grain control in the developer's hands on how they actually optimize and select what uh, data to load. And then sampler feedback streaming really brings all of these together. You know, one of the things that we did with Xbox One X is we added dedicated hardware to the Xbox One X to really understand how developers are leveraging memory. And one of the things that we discovered is oftentimes developers would actually load significantly more data than they would actually need 
be needed by the GPU. So we customize our GPU and we added this new capability so that developers can load partial uh, portions of a texture into memory. And that acts as a multiplier beyond the actual IO speeds and the amount of memory in the box because developers can be that much more efficient in how they use the hardware. So I want to get back to the uh, custom um, NVMe SSD because we've heard a lot of folks talking about SSD as one of the buzzwords kind of this generation around. And I want to be clear is that it's not like we just took a, a hard drive and I happen to have one here. Not this is a, this is for my PC, uh, but it's not like we just took a hard drive and, and plopped it in there and we walked away. There's a lot of magic and a lot of engineering that has gone into getting this sustained uh, read write speed is that and the and the throughput is that accurate? Absolutely. So, you know, when we designed this, as we thought about the entire end-to-end -end system, we really designed this to make sure that there's no bottlenecks in the system, from the CPU to the GPU to the memory to the Xbox Velocity architecture. And one of the things that we heard from developers is they need a guaranteed performance target to make sure that it's as easy as possible for them to optimize their title and really get the best performance out of the system. So as we designed the Xbox Velocity architecture and the NVMe SSD, we've really optimized for that sustained throughput so that developers always know that they're guaranteed to get this minimum level of performance. And like the SSD that you showed, you know, a lot of SSDs that maybe come in a PC as an example, they'll slow down as they get uh, hotter or the drive itself may put itself in a maintenance mode. And we don't want those things to happen while the game's actually playing because those would lead to like stutters and uh, clips and things like that. So when you're running your game on the Xbox Velocity architecture, you're always getting that guaranteed performance and developers can really optimize their games to take advantage of it. And that's also, you know, we've got the internal um, NVMe SSD, but also works with the expansion card as well, correct? Because it's essentially the same thing. It Exactly. It, you know, and that was one of the key design principles that we had is we knew there, there there was going to be lots of players out there that wanted to expand their storage. And we wanted to make sure that that storage performed at the exact same rate as the internal storage. So that as a developer, you're just guaranteed that same great experience. And then as a player, I can choose where I actually want to store my game. Yeah, it's interesting because we talked about how it's not just an off the shelf, it's highly optimized because you have to remember when people go over to like, I've done this, I go over to PC parts picker and I'm going through and I'm, I'm building my PC. Sometimes something may be in there that I don't know because I'm not an engineer that may slow down the entire pipeline, but we've had our, our electrical mm -hmm. engineers and our, and our engineers go through it and make sure that every step of the way, everything is as fast as an optimized as it possibly can be. It's because that's what you get when you're writing, when, you're, when you've got custom hardware. And then on top of that, the custom software, right? Exactly. You know, and that's the thing is that's one of the things, this is an area that we fully expect a lot of innovation over this generation. And we're really excited to see the early results we're already seeing, but there's going to be tremendous amount of innovation here over the generation. And that's where we work really closely with all the best developers from across the world to make sure that we're optimizing the hardware, we're optimizing the software. And it's really that deep integration between hardware and software that will really unlock those next generation capabilities. So that, that's the key takeaway here is that this is not off the shelf. Everything in that stack is is custom and it's highly optimized. We've heard a lot of folks talk about uh, about read write speeds and you just yourself said you expect a lot of innovation in this area. When we look at the, the next element, which is the hardware accelerated decompression, I mean, that kind of says what it is, but what does it mean to me as a gamer, right? <laughs> sure. So, you know, game assets are compressed, you know, to fit as many assets as you can on uh, a disk or to minimize your download or to just be as respectful as possible of the user's actual storage. But when you actually use the data while the game's running, the data has to be decompressed. And if you were to do this on the CPU, it easily take, you know, two to four Zen 2 CPU cores, and that would actually take those cores away from the game uh, developer and the game experience. So we didn't want to do that. So we created dedicated hardware decompression blocks where the system actually offloads that processing from the CPU to these decom blocks so that it's completely seamless from a developer's perspective. So they can basically request the data on demand as quickly as they need to. And the system handles this and they just get it just in time for when they need it.
So should I think about this like, um, you know, if I'm encoding a video at home on my PC, it's like it's like Intel QuickSync or something like that. It's it's something that's deep inside the chip or it's hardware related that allows this this the CPU and the GPU to kind of do what they do. And this is going to handle that. Is that would that be accurate? Exactly. And we also have a, a custom uh, compression algorithm really designed around texture data because a large portion of the game sizes are actually driven by textures. So we've actually even optimized that very uniquely for our scenarios with texture data to make sure that we can make this as fast as possible. Now, uh, we're getting back a little bit to the SSD. We talked about the hardware and how it's optimized. One of those elements of optimization and that custom part is direct storage. And I guess, I mean, that 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 that, that seems like it's it's pretty straightforward. But a lot of folks forget is that a lot of this, the way that we store information on storage devices, whether it's a hard drive or SSD, has remained unchanged for quite some time, right? Absolutely. You know, the traditional file APIs that developers have used were actually written more than 30 years ago. And if you think about how much technology changes in 30 years, and as we actually looked at kind of what the access patterns were and how developers design and, and build their IO streaming systems, it was very obvious we needed to innovate here as well and just give a lot more control and flexibility to developers. So with the new direct storage API, developers have fine grained control of how and when assets are loaded. They can build their own priority queues to be very intelligent. And what this really translates to as a gamer is, you know, if you think about a large, massive open world environment, and I want to fast travel from one portion of the map to another, you know, you've got to load all this new content in. Or if maybe I'm, you know, going through a, an environment super quickly, you know, how quickly can I load, you know, new texture data in, new geometry data in, to just really make sure developers have that fine grained control. And once again, to your earlier comment about optimization, this is part of that optimization because we need to make sure that our processor is fed with data at all times. You don't want the processor waiting for data coming off of the IO subsystem because those are the things that will drop your frame rate or reduce the density or the complexity of the environments that you're in. Now, one of the other areas of the Xbox Velocity architecture, and all of these are kind of under that umbrella we've been talking about, is the sampler feedback streaming. And this is one that I, I, I'm kind of having trouble getting my head around. I don't know what a MIP map is. So, <laughs> so tell me, tell us about that, because I'm looking at this and I think I get it, but this one's, this one's got me a little puzzled. Sure. So when your game's actually running and when you look at the scene, there's actually thousands of texture, uh, textures that are actually loaded into memory at any one time to produce that one frame of the game. And like I said before, with the Xbox One X, we put unique hardware in there to actually inventory how people were actually using uh, memory. And one thing, you know, when the objects get closer to you in the scene to give that crisp level of detail you need a higher resolution texture to be able to sample and uh, to generate those pixels but the challenge is is those consume a lot of memory they consume a lot of io bandwidth so knowing the fact that you know oftentimes we use less than a third of the data that's actually loaded into memory we actually added customizations to the gpu that allows the gpu to load data on demand right before it needs it so you don't have to load the entire texture into memory you can load just a portion of it and then every frame we can be that much more dynamic so what it really comes down to is it drives efficiency. So you get even more performance well beyond the raw hardware specifications themselves because developers can be that much more efficient in how they use it. And I want to talk about the fact that, you know, the, the hardware accelerated decompression, the direct storage API and the sampler feedback streaming, those three elements are frankly only possible because of the, the custom work we've done with the, uh, with the SSD. Is, would, would that be an accurate statement? Yeah, you know, you know, we kind of say if we think of the heart of the Xbox Series X is our custom processor, really the soul of the Xbox Series X is the Xbox Velocity architecture, and it really influenced a huge design point across uh, you know, all these systems. And as we think about the Xbox Velocity architecture, it is that marrying of the hardware capabilities that we've designed, the customizations that we've built on top of that, and then providing the right operating system and the right developer tools to really take full advantage of what we've designed in the system.
You know, as I go through here, I'm looking at, you know, I have this blog, the blog post, and I'll put a link to that in the thing below that you did earlier this week. The numbers that you're putting out here in terms of the IO and transferring data, these numbers are ginormous. I mean, 100 gigabytes of data store on the SSD just in time when the game requires. That's that's unbelievable, isn't it? Yeah, and that's one of the things that we're super excited about is, you know, even with the early results that we're already seeing, you know, early this year we showed uh, how even back compact games get better on top of the Xbox Series yeah. X by dramatically lowering, you know, the load times and whatnot. And that's raw hardware itself. You know, as we think about games that are really built natively for this next generation or games that are really optimized to take full advantage of it, you know, you're going to see even bigger uh, innovation here. And I think I think it allows developers to fundamentally rethink and challenge some of their ideas of how they've designed and built games in the past. Uh, and I think it's just going to be an area ripe for innovation across the generation. Now, Jason, again, we, you, you went into a great blog post on this at Xbox Wire that I'll link to. But if you could take the do a TLDR on Xbox Velocity Architecture, could you do that? What would it be? <laughs> it's, it's a great question. Uh, basically, what I would say is, this is really, you know, we designed this to be the ultimate solution for game asset streaming. And what it really comes down to is enabling developers to deliver on their creative vision with no constraints. And it acts as a multiplier on top of the raw performance that the hardware delivers. And it's really about making sure that players can get into their experiences as quickly as possible. It's about delivering a new level of fidelity, variety, and density in the games that you're playing. And then it's really setting the foundation for future innovation in gaming, unlike anything you've seen before. All right, well, I, I know you gotta go, Jason. I appreciate you coming on again. We talked about Xbox Series Optimize, what that means, and of course, the Xbox Velocity Architecture, which is just ridiculous speeds and all the custom hardware and all the custom work we've done to, to, to make gaming faster, better, higher resolution, all those things. I can't wait to see what some of our developing partners are gonna do. So Jason, thanks so much for your time today. Thank you very much, Larry. Thanks, Jason. Um, there you go. SSD fast, SSD custom, SSD cool. Now, like I promised, this was a very detailed explanation on the Velocity architecture, and in short, this will ensure that the Xbox Series X has no type of bottlenecks when it comes to the SSD, and that it will be blazing fast. Now, I know some people really didn't believe what I was saying before, but now hearing it directly from Microsoft itself, hopefully it makes sense to you why they have such an increase in speeds, and why their optimizations will make the SSD far faster than its hardware specs. Now I'm pretty much done with this subject, it's pretty much beating a dead horse at this point. The only thing left is to see this in motion and thankfully we'll get to see some games running on the Series X this Thursday at Microsoft's showcase event. Anyways, I want to know what you guys think about the velocity architecture, the speeds, the efficiency, how do you think it will benefit the next generation games running on the Xbox Series X? Let me know in the comment section down below and like I usually say, please like, share and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you guys on the next one.